welcome back. A few years ago, I was asked a really good question by one of my pupils and not one I'd been asked before. We've been doing nuclear fusion and they appreciated that probably this was a little bit like hydrogen bombs going off. And they asked me if the sun is burning or at least fusing so much fuel per second, why can't we hear that on Earth? And I thought, what a fantastic question to ask. So today I'm going to try and explain why sound can't go through deep space. So let's do an experiment. I'm amazed by the number of pupils I speak to in other schools who have never seen this experiment done. I'm not quite sure why, but it might be because of the apparatus you need. So what we're going to do is we're going to take an electric bell, and that's the kind of bell that might have been an old-fashioned doorbell. Sounds something like this. And we've put it inside a vacuum chamber. In other words, it's inside a bell jar. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the vacuum pump to remove the air from this. And what you've got to do is have a listen to the bell as we remove the air from the vacuum chamber and it becomes more and more like deep space, a place where there's almost no molecules at all. So the first thing I'm going to do is turn on the power supply and there are some wires coming from the power supply down into the electric bell in the vacuum chamber and I hope you can hear it ringing reasonably well. And then we've got the vacuum pump here. I'm going to turn on the vacuum pump and slowly but surely remove the air from this bell jar and reduce the pressure inside it. Now this takes a while, uh, but after a while we will have removed most of the air from the bell jar. There's always a tiny bit left because we can't get down to absolutely zero pressure with this vacuum pump, but we can do a reasonably good job. Um, but what I'd like to show you is what happens if I uh, switch off the vacuum pump and don't let any air back in. And I hope you agree you can hardly hear the bell at all. But what I'm going to do to prove that it's still ringing is just tilt this slightly. And you can probably hear it banging against the glass. And you might hear a faint buzzing, most of that's a vibration carried up the cables, but we'll let a little bit of air in slowly. And a bit more air. And a little bit more air. And more. And now I think you'll agree, it goes back to the sound it was making when we first started. So for an explanation, you might know that sound is a mechanical wave. Uh, light and other electromagnetic waves can come to us from the sun and reach the earth. That's things like the visible light we see, uh, the infrared heat and the ultraviolet, which gives us a suntan. But sound doesn't. Now, it's easy to say that's because the sun is a very long way away and therefore the uh, sound pressure level or what we might call the volume would be incredibly low. But if you think about it, the main issue between the sun and the earth is that there's no air, it's a vacuum in deep space. And therefore, if sound is a mechanical wave caused by a vibration of particles, there are no particles to vibrate. So when I speak and the microphone picks up my sound, there's air between me and the microphone on the top of the camera, and the air vibrates and the particles in front of me vibrate the next particles and the next particles and the next particles and so on. The air doesn't travel to the microphone, it just passes on its vibrations as a longitudinal wave. And that air is what we call a medium, a material that carries the wave energy. But of course in a vacuum, in the bell jar or the vacuum chamber today, if we remove the air, there's no medium. So never mind how well the bell vibrates, there is nothing between the bell and the glass jar to carry that vibration, there's no medium. So you don't hear any sound at all. You can't hear sound through a vacuum. This is a method that's used quite a bit to soundproof buildings. You can imagine double glazed windows at an airport to reduce the sound of the jet engines outside. They use two sheets of glass and in between the two sheets of glass put a vacuum or maybe a very low pressure gas. Very little medium to carry the sound wave so no sound passes through. It's worth pointing out that all the way through that experiment you could see the bell ringing and if you could see it there's some proof that electromagnetic waves, that's light waves, can travel through a vacuum, but sound can't. 
So I hope you've learned today that sound needs a medium to travel and normally that medium is air and that without air between us you won't hear any sound at all. Hope you enjoyed that video and I look forward to seeing you next time. <laughs>